Hey, everybody. How are we all doing this morning? Are we good? Good, good. Um, here's the thing. Um, I, I, I kind of think we should celebrate good times. Celebrate good times. Come on. For there's a party going on right here, a celebration to last throughout the years. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We gonna celebrate your party with you. Come on now, let's all celebrate and have a good time. You know, I, I thought, uh, it's okay if you wanna laugh, that was kind of ridiculous. Um, I thought about having them play that as I walked up here, you know, and I was gonna like do a little boogie or something, <laughs> but I'll spare you, I'm so sorry. I won't do that. But man, I love a good time, a good party with some fun drinks and some fun food and some fun people. Or maybe it's the food that makes it more fun. I don't know, you decide. But man, I love a good time. I love to celebrate. I think it's a little bit inside of all of us. I mean, I think you guys would probably agree, celebrating is pretty freaking fun. It's amazing and it's like, it's like this thing inside of us that's like, man, I just gotta get my people together and we are gonna party. But why? Why is that a thing? Did you ever stop and ask yourself, why do I have this feeling inside of me? Why do we collectively all together love to celebrate? I've liked to celebrate since I was little. Um, when I was about to turn seven, I came to my mom and I said, Mom, this year for my birthday party, I wanna have a rock star party. And she was like, okay, Joel, we can have a rock star party. And so, um, so I, uh, I, I, I started to plan it with her and man, um, she was like, we're gonna go all out. I think it was probably like one of our family's last like kind of big birthday parties where we were inviting the neighborhood over and everything, you know, one of those parties and all the neighbor kids were there. And I mean, when I say we pulled out all the stops, we pulled out all the stops. Like, I mean, the week of the boxes from Oriental Trading were coming in, you know, you were like, ooh, look at that. We got the sunglasses and the champagne flutes. And I think they got some pictures of it up here. Oh, there's me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And um, so we, it, was, it was awesome. My mom even got the karaoke machine, and um, I was singing some high school musical songs with some worship songs mixed in there. Don't worry, you know. And um, man, it was a good time, and I was having a blast, and then the party ended. And I was no longer actually a rock star, and even at seven, I was kind of left with this question of, what was all that for? Why did we have this big party? You know, all of us have this thing inside of us that loves to party, that loves to celebrate, but why? And what? What should we celebrate? Who should we celebrate? When, where, how is this all going down? The question this morning for us is this. How do we live in such a way where we are people who celebrate what's worth celebrating? That's the question. You know, we live like in this crazy, fast-paced world. Accomplish one task, move on to the next. Check the one box, okay, gotta go do the next. Jules and I are, we're, we're in the process of moving into our house right now, and so it's like boom, 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 thing after thing. Oh, next thing, okay, we're gonna go after that big life thing. Boom, home run, all right, new thing. And we keep going, and we keep going, but the Bible actually says that we should stop. Stop and pause and celebrate in between in all these awesome moments. You know, celebration is a powerful gift for us to recognize the work that we've done and the work that all these people around us are doing. You know, celebration helps us see the ways that God is present in our lives. And celebration is a pretty special act of recognizing and enjoying God's goodness in our life. Here's the thing not to miss today you walk away with one thing, it's this. When we celebrate the good in our life, we celebrate the God in our life. I'll say it again. 
when we celebrate the good in our life, we celebrate the God in our life. Now, any celebration you know needs a proper invitation. So this morning, I want to extend to us a proper invitation to celebration. You'll see it up here on the screen behind me. This is our invitation. Everybody gets one this morning. This is our invitation to celebration. On any, for any celebration, you need to know a few details. You need to know the, 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 the what. You need to know the who. You need to know the why, the where, the when. To this morning, we're going to cover all of those details that you need to know about what the Bible says about celebration. So this is your invitation to celebration. And the first thing on our invitation is what? What is really worth celebrating? From the Bible, we can clearly see that God loves when we celebrate. All throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see celebrations again and again and again. There's partying, there's feasting, right? We see that God loves good celebration when we celebrate the good things in our life. So if God loves celebrating, it's worth asking, what does he really love that we celebrate? And from the Bible, we can kind of start to look at the stories throughout it, and we can start to put together things that we think, that we believe, that we know from Scripture, he says this is what's worth celebrating. The first one is this, remembrances. Remembrances. You could also call them memories if you wanted to, whatever. But think about birthdays anniversaries, even holidays, we celebrate these awesome things that have happened in the past that we're saying, man, that's really cool that that happened. That's a really cool moment. Let's remember that. The concept of celebrations as remembrances actually begins all the way back in Exodus 12 when the Israelites are, are, decide that they are going to celebrate Passover as a remembrance of what God did for them to deliver them out of Egypt away from slavery, and so they said, okay, we're gonna put together this feast. We're gonna put together this amazing holiday that we are going to celebrate, and then we're gonna continue to celebrate year after year to say thank you to God for what he did to deliver them out of Egypt, but also, not only that, not only to say thank you, but to remember God's faithfulness and his promises for generations to come. So thinking about birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, things that we celebrate on the regular, these awesome moments that we're saying, man, that's pretty special that that happened. We're not just saying that it's special that that happened. Like the Israelites, what we're actually doing in those spots, in those remembrances, what we're actually doing is we are walking with Jesus, walking with God, where we actually get to partake in this rhythm this practice in our life where we are learning how to recognize the goodness in our life, the goodness that he put in our life in the past when this thing happened, and the goodness that's to come that he promises in the future. That's what we're doing when we're celebrating birthdays. You know, next time you celebrate a birthday, I would challenge you to not just think of it as like, all right, I'm alive, woo. No, but take a second to say and to realize, all right, I'm celebrating the goodness that is in the fact that I was given life X amount of years ago and I have life to come for X amount of years. Wow, that's really cool. All right, but what if we don't just recognize it and what if we started to actually call it out? What if we actually started to call out the God in the good that's in our life? Let's start to call out the God in the good that's in our life. You know, what if in that next uh, birthday card that you're writing somebody, for the first time ever, you don't just sign it, love dad? What if you break out that loose leaf paper and you start writing a note and you actually tell the person that you're writing this birthday card to what they mean to you? You give them some words of encouragement. Maybe you actually take some time to pray and you ask the Lord, Lord, do you have a word for me for this person for this year? An encouraging word that I can pass on to them that reminds them of your goodness. That's what it looks like to not only recognize that God is in the goodness, but to actually call it out, to take it a step further. By the way, that applies to lots of other things, not just birthday cards. Let's start calling out the God in the goodness. Another thing that he wants us to celebrate, that from the Bible we can actually tell is a what that we should celebrate. It's responses. We should celebrate with responses. 
in Scripture, it's not just these big moments for the Israelites or it's not just big moments for other characters in the Bible that we see people celebrate. Actually, people all throughout the Bible, we see them celebrating and rejoicing over the small, little, but awesome, amazing situations and circumstances. It's this rejoicing that comes out of them. You know, this is a big thing, but notice how it's a small action here from David. When the Ark of the Covenant was being returned to Israel, 2 Samuel 6, verses 14, notice here it says, King David danced before the Lord with all his might. He danced before the Lord with all his might. I, I can't picture one of our, our, our current presidents or one of our current political figures dancing with all his might or leaping. It's just not something that I can picture. But King David actually danced with all his might out of joy, not to mention his many psalms, both written and actually sung by the Israelites, praising God for all that he has done for them. It's a response. It's a, whoa, I am going to, with my daily posture, say, Look, I notice and I recognize and I see what God is doing and I'm gonna call it out in the here and now. You know, our daily spontaneous response to good things in life can and should be celebration. It was so easy to celebrate when we were kids. You know, I'm thinking back to that birthday party when I was seven. It was so easy to celebrate when we were kids. You know, I was like, you know, you go to the, grocery store when you're little and you pass the like deli and the lady's like would you like a slice of free cheese and you're like yeah yeah I want a slice of free cheese that just made my whole day or like you, you know you, you, you notice there's a penny on the ground make sure it's heads up and you're like Ooh, that was bad all right and, you, and you're like whoa it didn't make that crazy noise you're like whoa that's awesome I found a free penny and also Family movie nights, family movie nights. They are like the best memory ever. I know we're all thinking of a family movie night in our head right now. It's literally the best thing ever. Celebrations as a kid, they were so easy. When you were a kid, you celebrated everything. What if as adults, we celebrated everything? You know, I find I, I do this best when I'm actually active in my prayer life more and more. Um, when I'm going to God and I'm taking my worries and my stressors and the pressures on my life or the things that I'm facing, I'm struggling with, and I'm going to God and I'm saying, God, I need your help with this. It helps me realize actually when the good things that show up in my life, when they're happening, it helps me realize that they're from God. It actually helps me realize the good things in my life more because I'm actually going to God and I'm saying, God, I'm facing this issue. Maybe for you it's, man, God, I really need help with this certain relationship and I really, really need to rely on you for that. Maybe it's, God, I'm really having a financial burden right now. I'm facing this struggle where I can't make ends meet or God, I really don't know what direction my life is headed right now. I don't know if I should move back to this place or stay where I'm at or whatever. Whatever it is you're facing, you can bring that to God and what happens when you bring that to God and then the good things happen in your life because they're happening all around you whether you realize it or not, when the good things are happening in your life, you actually start to realize them more and you can celebrate the fact that God is the one who provided them for you. I start to notice more and more and more in my life the things that I can celebrate, the things that I should be celebrating when I'm praying to God and asking for them. Final thing from scripture that we can tell is very important to God that we celebrate is returns, returns. And I'm not talking about the Amazon ones that you take to Whole Foods. I'm talking about, I'm talking about returns of people. Sometimes, um, for one reason or another, people walk out of our life or they exit the circle that we're in or they go a different direction than what you know and you, what you believe is the good life with God. And they're kind of walking a different path and you see them and they're, they're gone for a little while. And that can kind of leave you broken and bent out of shape and maybe confused because you're like, man, I, I cared for that person so much and I still care for that person. Why did they have to go and run away? In Luke 15, Jesus tells us a story about a son who 
leaves his father and he actually goes and he loses all of the inheritance that his father gave him and he's, he's, he's down to his last penny, he's got nothing to his name and he finally, after going and losing it all, decides, you know what, the servants back home at my father's house, they have it better than I do. Why don't I go back? And so take a look at what happens when he decides to return. Luke chapter 15, verses 20 and 24, it says, and he arose and came to his father But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this is my son. He was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. Notice how there's no condemnation. There's no praying for his downfall. Notice how there's no, hey, you left my life, you stay out of it and you never come back. No, there's none of that. There's only forgiveness and celebration. And it's the same for me, you, and Jesus. How many times a day do we kind of stray, walk away, run away from what God is saying? And how many times a day do we come back on our hands and knees? Jesus, please, will you take me back? And you know what he does every time? He takes us right back. We return and he celebrates. So whose return are you ready to celebrate? Sometimes we think we want people to return to our life, to the good life. You know, we all have a family member, we all have friends that we can think of right now who were like, man, I really wish they would just return. I wish they would come back. But are you ready to celebrate them? Like if they were to come back in your life right now, would you throw a party for them? Would you accept them, welcome them with open arms, whatever the situation, and would you say, welcome back? That's a good challenge for me right now. Am I ready for their return? Am I gonna celebrate it? because that's what celebrating God and the goodness of my life would look like. And it's what celebrating God and the goodness of your life would look like too. Notice how all of these celebrations, whether we realize it or give credit to where credit is due or not, notice how all of these celebrations are because of something God did. It's goodness in our lives because of God. And so the bigger question that we actually need to go back to our invitation to ask is this. The more important detail on our invitation this morning is this. It's who. Not what, but who. You know, the Bible says that God holds the whole world in his hands. Everything is his. Every celebration, every return Every response, every remembrance, it's all his. And so what we're doing when we celebrate the what is we're actually celebrating the who. And when we celebrate the who, we're celebrating him. You know, one of the most celebratory nights in all of history, in all of history, is the night Jesus came to be born on earth. And on that night Jesus was born, the angels of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and declared the good news. And I can only imagine the strategy behind this because what the angels were doing when they appeared that night to the shepherds is they were declaring once and for all, this is what we, this is who we are celebrating. Join with me in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says, The angel was then joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. This is the example. This is an example set to us from here on out in the Bible saying, Every time you celebrate, guess what? You're celebrating Jesus. So you know that like feeling that I was talking about earlier that each of us have, that we're like, 
man, I have this feeling inside of me that I know I'm supposed to celebrate. It's inside of you. Like, like you never had to be taught that you were supposed to celebrate. Like, your parents didn't come to you and say, hey, this is a really important thing that you learn, celebration. No, it was inside of you since you were born. That's because, that's because when you're celebrating, you're innately celebrating God. You were wired that way whether through words or praise or song or dance or emotions or literally just pure emotion, God has wired us at our very core to celebrate him. When we're celebrating the good in our life, we're celebrating the God in our life. Our celebrations, both big and small, are because of him. And, you know, this is easy on something like Christmas or Easter or whatever your favorite holiday is, especially around the church. You know, it's like, man, all right, that one's for him. You bet. You got it. What about your big day? What about your, uh, your next, um, I don't know, your retirement party coming up, right? Or what about your wedding? Your big day. Guess what? Your big day is his big day because of his goodness. It's his goodness that got you there. I uh, was in a family that liked to celebrate good stuff. So naturally we celebrated the wonderful holiday of Thanksgiving growing up, as do all of us in this room. And at Thanksgiving, I was in one of those families where uh, you know, right as you're sitting down for the meal, right as you're about to uh, break into some of that scrum diddly umptious green bean casserole, right as you're about to have some of that amazing turkey and stuffing and you're just so excited for it, someone, usually like a mom or a dad or whoever, is like, wait, let's all go around and let's say something we're thankful for, right? And then you all go around and you're like trying to come up with something. You're like, oh shoot, they took mine. You're like, dang it. Oh, gosh, I got to go back to the drawing board. All right, so I wasn't um, that surprised, but I was surprised to find out that in my wife's family, my mother-in-law, she thinks that you do that at every holiday. So Christmas time, you go around the Christmas table. What's something that brings you joy in your life? Okay, then you got birthdays. Oh, this one's, this one's tough. Let's all go around and say our favorite thing about the person. Or worse, one way we've seen them grow this year. Something like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, no, no, no. Halloween rolls around. Let's all share something real spooky. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Not that one. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but the thing is, here's, here's the thing. Guys, she's on to something. My mother-in-law, she's on to something. Not on something. She's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's on to something. My mother-in-law, she has a reason to celebrate. She has a reason to celebrate, and that's the next part on our invitation, the why. Why do we celebrate? Turn to Philippians with me, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow, and let gentleness be seen in every relationship. For our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer. Throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. And then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. We celebrate goodness in our life, not just because it's a way of saying thanks to God or a way of praising him for that goodness. When we celebrate, we're meant to celebrate together. And when we celebrate together, what we are actually doing is we are physically spreading that goodness onto other people, spreading that joy, spreading that peace, spreading that gentleness. When good things are happening in your life and you celebrate it, you'd say, hey, hey, look at my life. I want to celebrate the good that's happening in my life You are sharing that with others and they get to experience that joy, that peace, that love, that goodness as well. What if we were, as a church, as a group of people, what if we took a step in celebrating where our intention behind every celebration that we did together, whether that's in a small group 
That's a group of friends you're having a birthday party with, whether you're going out to lunch after this. What if together we said every time we celebrated, how is this for each other? How is this for others? How is this going to strengthen us? How is this going to grow us? How is this going to improve others around us? That's the why. That's what takes this from birthday cake and ice cream to everlasting significance. Because your party is not just for you. It's for others to experience God's goodness in your life and now in the lives of others. So uh, two key details that every invitation needs that we haven't gotten to yet, the when and the where. When and the where is this all going down? Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Not, um, not your next birthday, not Christmas, right here, right now. I'm giving you every reason right now to after, at, right after this, you better get out of here, you guys better go get some food. You guys better go celebrate, go out to lunch. That's what's happening right here, right now because there's goodness all around us and we have every reason to celebrate in the here and now. So here are two challenges to remember to celebrate here and now. Number one is this, intentionally stop and celebrate more often. I think both Jesus and my mother-in-law would agree Celebrating is not just for holidays, but so often we get caught up in the problems in our life, the frustrations in our life. So often we've decided that, hey, we've got all these like rain clouds hanging out over us, and that's okay if there's a few of them. The sunshine can poke through sometimes. But I'm not talking about just sunshine. What if we replace those rain clouds with a bunch of disco balls? What if every time that we had a problem, we actually were taking that energy and putting that toward focus on celebration for the goodness in our life? Can you imagine how many parties we'd be having? We'd be having like 10 parties a day. I want us to have many parties. Embrace the celebration. Embrace the goodness in your life. Here are a few ways that you might be able to do that. Make personal and family traditions. And not just make personal and family traditions, I'm talking like family holidays, family rituals. Make it so that, you know, your family, every time that part of the year comes around, they're like, hey, are we doing that? You know, in my family, it's like, are we doing family light drive this year? And everyone's like, what's family light drive? You guys probably put it together. It's Christmas time, you drive with the lights, and you got the hot cocoa and the blankets all around you. I mean, we've got like dozens of other family holidays, and some, sometimes other families hear about it, and they're like, whoa, what's that? That's like bizarre. But guess what? It's really important to our family. And when you have these family holidays, when you establish these family traditions, what you're kind of doing is you're actually creating a rhythm for your, from your, for your family of realizing and recognizing the goodness, the pattern of goodness that is in your life. If you have kids, what you're doing when you celebrate these family traditions, these family rituals and holidays that you're creating, every time you do something as a family and you repeat it like that, what you're doing is you're reminding them that God's goodness is in their life. You could also plan ahead Guys, husbands, boyfriends, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me. What if we like kept a list in our phone of all the things that our spouse, our wife, our girlfriend, whatever, all the stuff that they appreciated and liked and what if for the first time ever, we didn't wait till the anniversary came around and we got the flowers and we got the card and we got the chocolates and guess what? We even put it on the counter for them to come out to in the morning. Mm, that's pretty good. No, but what if this year, all throughout the year, we went down that list and we were like, hey, all, every, every month, every week, whatever it is, I'm gonna find some little thing that she likes that I'm gonna call out and I'm gonna be like, hey, I got this for you or hey, I'm gonna do this for you. Because when we're doing that, what we're doing is we're actually saying, hey, I notice all of the goodness that God has placed in my life because of you, and I want to celebrate that. What about the unexpected things? It's one thing when we celebrate the home run or, you know, the championship. What about celebrating the strikeouts? What about celebrating the, 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 the mercy rule, right? 
I know, I know, it, it's, it's kind of funny, but what if we actually did that? What if we celebrated the unexpected things in life because guess what, there's still goodness in baseball. You lost, there's still goodness in the fact that you played with your team, you played a really good game. Go out for ice cream anyways. Um, a few rainbows this past week. Uh, saw them while I was driving and I thought they were pretty cool. Rainbows are actually a reminder that God says in the Bible that he is going to put in the sky as a reminder of the covenant that he made with Noah to not flood and destroy the earth again. That's a promise from God, and that's a good promise. So the next time that I see a rainbow, hold me to it, guys, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drive home right away, if I'm driving or whatever, and I, I'm gonna go pick up Julia, and I'm gonna say, Jules, get in the car, we're gonna go out to dinner because I saw a rainbow. Celebrate the unexpected things in life, the little things, the mundane things. All right, final thing I'll say today is this. Number two challenge for you guys to celebrate in the here and now. Consider how others can benefit from your celebration. I said this just a few minutes ago. Celebrating really is for others. But don't just stop there. Consider who else could really benefit from your celebration. You know, when you're thinking about planning your party, kind of go out of your way and think for a second, is there someone who I might not necessarily think to invite to this party, but actually would really benefit from experiencing the goodness that I'm experiencing in my life right now? Maybe it's not that complicated. Maybe instead of just 10 people, maybe you're inviting 20. Or maybe in tw instead of 20, maybe you're inviting 40 because you want as many people as possible to experience the goodness that God is placing in your life. You know, that's kind of what we do here each week at church. We're celebrating what Jesus has done for us. And man, wouldn't it be cool if every week there were more and more and more of us in this room celebrating that? That's a little bit of what we're trying to do at the Lancaster City campus that's starting on September 15th. We had a preview service back on July 14th and we have another preview service coming up next week. And in the meantime, we've been making it an uh, uh, intentional effort to interact with, to engage with organizations, businesses, people, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Lancaster City with the goal of introducing more and more people to Jesus and making disciples and helping people walk out a life in the good life, in a walk with Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, on September 15th, as well as next week, and what we did on July 14th, and many to come, we are going to celebrate when that happens. We are going to celebrate. In fact, there's a big launch party after the launch Sunday coming up, and we are gonna celebrate because that is good. And there is so much goodness happening on those Sundays. There's so much goodness happening today, and it's all because of God. When we celebrate the goodness in our life, we're celebrating the God in our life. There's an invitation for all of us to the good life. You know, that's the series that we've been in over the last several weeks. And together we've walked through this invitation to the good life, a life and a path with Jesus. You know, many of us have RSVP'd yes to that party, to a life with Jesus in the here and now and an everlasting life. Some of us are still considering whether or not we're gonna RSVP. Some of us have lost that invitation along the way. Some of us have gotten hurt and we've thrown the invitation out. And yet many people, so many people have not received that invitation yet. I'm so excited for all of the celebrations to come in my life all of the awesome celebrations, both in this life and the next life. But I think more than anything, I'm most excited about who I'm gonna celebrate with. I want as many people at those parties as possible. 
And I want as many people, we want together as a church, as many people to be invited into the party that is the good life. And that can only happen when we extend an invite into that. Over the next four weeks, Pastor Joe and the teaching team, they're gonna lead us through a new series called Jesus and Friends. And in Jesus and Friends, we are going to actually get some tangible steps and dive into scripture to understand more and unpack more about what it means to invite people to the good life of what we've been talking about and invite people to come to church, invite people to know Jesus, to have a true relationship with him and become disciples of him. If that's something that you are interested in, if you wanna know more about that, if that's something that is like, man, I'm a little nervous about that, but I would like to know how to make it easier, come out and try it out for the next four weeks. We would love to have you. We cannot wait to see you guys back. Thanks for being with us today. Have a great week and make sure you go get some lunch to celebrate.